There are those whose hardship is that Allah has not bestowed upon them children. So you're married one year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years. You still don't have children. Allah has a reason. Believe in that. Allah's reason is bigger than whatever you can imagine. He is favoring you. He is favoring you. How? That's what we want to know. I want children. I'm not getting them. You are telling me it's a favor of Allah. Well, what if you had a child who grew up to be a person who was a total burden and he was a drug addict and a person who was in the clubs and he was the one pinching all your electronic gadgets and selling them in order to buy his drugs. It's happening. And the day comes when you said, Oh Allah, I wish I didn't even have this child. So Allah says, you know what? We love you enough. We don't even want you to go through something. What if you had a child and I'm going to say this, it's a hardship. It's gruesome. It's difficult to hear, but let's listen to it. What if you had a child and at a tender age, the child was crushed under a truck? May Allah not do that to us. It has happened to some. Imagine the type of hardship they went through. Allah will only let someone who will be able to go through such hardship, go through that hardship. Because he says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not test or burden someone with something more than they can manage, they can handle. That's your limit. Well, it's your limit. You're still there. So Allah says, we knew that you would go through this difficulty and so on. So we did not give you the child in the first place. It's a blessing. So now you sit and you start worrying, you know... I'm already 48, 50 years old. I don't have children. It's just me and my husband. What's going to happen when he dies or I'm alone and you know, no one's going to be taking care of me. And what's going to happen? I know that other auntie there, you know, she was old and aged. They didn't have children. And then when the husband died, look at what happened to her. All this is unnecessary tension. Unnecessary tension. Because... Allah created you. He has a plan for you. He knows what the plan is. So lay your trust in him. He has that plan. In your capacity, whatever you have, you can try. Some people might say, okay, I'm going to look for a beautiful old age home where we can register or perhaps where I can go and retire. Wow, that's your plan. If you want to start doing it from now, there's no harm. But so long as you're not depressed in the process, you're just planning. Or I'm going to make amends. I'm going to try and speak to this person, a sister of mine, someone else to say, look, when this happens, that's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to get a helper to come and live with me. If I'm all alone, I'm talking of real hardships. It is a concern, but it must not be a point of depression. It must not be. You must trust Allah enough for it not to become a point of depression. I'm depressed because of this. Allah knows he has a plan for you. Don't worry. That plan might include a little bit of difficulty and hardship. But then again, he wants to give you Jannatul Firdaus. If you take a look at Surah Al-Kahf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the story of Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr. There was a young man that they saw. And you know what? Al-Khidr comes and executes him. And Musa alayhi salam says, how could you execute this man? I'm sure you've probably read the story, a lot of you. Surah Al-Kahf. So he says, as for this young man, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِينَا فَخَشِينَا أَنْ يُرْهِقَهُمَا طُغْيَانًا وَكُفْرًا فَأَرَدْنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا مِّنْهُ زَكَاتًا وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمًا Allah says, as for the young boy, Khidr is telling Musa alayhi salam, he has his parents and he's young. Perhaps when he grew older, he would have grown older in total disobedience and disbelief and a lot of 
hardship and difficulty would have come to burden his parents. So Allah wanted to replace him with someone who was better than him in goodness and obedience and the coolness of the eyes of the parents, whatever. So this was from the instruction of Allah. Now, I may never understand why that story is in the Quran the way it is. But I will extract as much as I can from it in terms of lesson. For me, the le one of the big lessons I learned from that story is when Allah knows that something will happen with this child later on such that you won't be able to handle it, it would have just been a blessing that Allah took the child away while the memories were all still happy. But you didn't look at it as a blessing. But it was. It is. Okay, what guarantee do you have that that child was going to be a bad child? I have no guarantee, but I do know that when Allah took the child away, Allah took the child away at the best timing. It's a test for you also. Go through the sabr, you get Jannatul Firdaus.